You wanna play games, motherfucker? Oh yeah, dude, I was thinking we could maybe play some Monopoly, or we also have Clue Jr. and Pin the Tail on the Donkey. Alright, I'll play. Okay, but with that one, I'm gonna have to blindfold you, so please don't freak out. Jeez, I told you not to freak out, man! Here's the review. What's up and welcome back to Interpreting the Stars, where today I'm going to be discussing the next chapter in the book of Saw, It's Spiral. <laughs> Spiral, chronicles of the life of Detective Zeke Banks, played by Chris Rock, who stumbles upon what appears to be yet another round of serial killings from yet another copycat jigsaw killer. This time, the killer is targeting corrupt cops and making them pay for their past indiscretions. Can Detective Banks stop the killer before it's too late? Man, the Jigsaw Killer must be the most popular serial killer in the world to have as many copycats as he's gotten, huh? Anyways, uh, if you guys have followed my channel at all, you know that the entire Saw series is actually a massive guilty pleasure series of mine. So, while some films are clearly better than others, I can't help but have a fun time with any of them. Maybe I'm just a twisted individual. I don't know. Needless to say, I was really intrigued about this one for a variety of different reasons. Biggest thing that I wanted, no, needed to know, was if it felt like the others because one of the biggest things about the trailers was that atmospherically they felt different to me than what you would normally get with the series and that kind of worried me just because I did like how the original franchise was structured as a whole. And the answer to this question was yes and no. The kills or traps themselves are very much like what you'd expect from the series up to this point all the way down to the practical effects used to create the gore and the creativity when drumming up different ways to kill people. Also the vision of what right and wrong means has always been a focal point of the killer in the past and the same goes here. Also the I want to play a game tapes are in there and uh, the end song as well that's there as usual. All of that is mostly satisfactory for a Saw fan like myself other than the fact that Tobin Bell's voice, not in the movie. That of course bummed me out since I do consider his voice to be a staple of the series and to see it gone, it kind of makes the entire film feel a little bit off. The detective stuff though, that's where I mostly have my thoughts. Typically in any given Saw movie, there's two sides of the story. There's the traps going on and then there's some kind of focus on the police and how they're trying to stop the jigsaw killer before the next victim dies. Same thing goes here, but there's so much more focus on the police side than there ever has been before. And it's kind of weird because it's headed up by this Detective Banks character who, I didn't really love him. I mean, it's Chris Rock, and being Chris Rock, he couldn't help himself but pull jokes here and there. And at times, it felt like the movie was trying to be a comedy. Even Samuel L. Jackson, who plays his dad, was pulling jokes. I mean, at one point he says, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> okay, then. So the atmosphere of the film definitely doesn't feel exactly like the other movies. And I'm not sure how to feel about that. It sort of feels imbalanced, in my opinion, because something so messed up and something so twisted is usually surrounded in drama and seriousness. So to see these jokes here and there was strange to me, to say the least. Also, I uh, predicted the twist ending pretty early on. Now, I don't know if it's because I've sort of figured out the Saw formula or if it's bad writing. Couldn't tell you. And not only that, but this is the very first film in the series not to tie into the events of the other movies. I mean, I get it. You do that too much and it's super convoluted. And so this is mostly standalone. But to see these twist endings get bigger and bigger throughout the series, ridiculous as they may be, and for it to go back to something much more simplified, I don't know, makes the film feel somewhat inferior to the others, maybe? Don't get me wrong, like I said, it doesn't matter what they do in the series, it really doesn't. I'm always gonna consider them to be a guilty pleasure of mine, and I'm gonna watch them all, again and again and again, so it doesn't really matter. But technically speaking, I feel like this one missed the mark here and there, especially because Tobin wasn't there. But again, I get why he's not. He's been dead for a very, very long time. So let's go ahead and break down my final score for a second. From an unbiased technical level, there's a lot to appreciate here other than maybe some practical effects for the gore, which is always a blast and a half to see when they go all out with practical effects. I think it was Saw 3D where they didn't do practical effects and instead used a lot of CGI for the gore and 
it just wasn't the same. So I definitely appreciated the practical effects work, uh, but really, I can't really say much more than that. The rest of the movie was business as usual. Nothing great or bad. You know, the unbiased score here is 58%. My bias score, or how I felt about the film in general, was higher, of course, since it is a guilty pleasure series. I was entertained enough while watching, not gonna lie. At the end of the day, I probably prefer to just, you know, stick with the original films starring Tobin Bell, but it's still fine for what it's worth. This score is 70%, averaging everything out to a final score of 64%, 64 out of 100 possible stars, or a D letter grade. If you're wondering where I rank this in the series as a whole, it's in second to last place, right above Saw 3D, which I consider to be the worst of the bunch. Guys, have you seen Spiral from the Book of Saw? If so, let me know your thoughts on it in the comments section and down below, and as for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button, and bell to be notified when I come out with an next review. And until then, peace out. Dave examines movies, we just watch for fun. Davey is the expert, he is the number one. Critic that I go to when I need a movie pick. Thanks for joining up with us.